All right, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm gonna do something kind of fun today. I'm gonna build my own custom quad with my own custom designed and printed frame. It's a 3D printed frame uh, that I've printed out of a pretty unique material. This is a carbon fiber nylon called Nylon X made by Matter Hackers. I've, uh, I've got another quad that I've been flying for a while. Um, you may have seen a video on this uh, the, some flight footage on this a while back uh, on one S it is pretty amazing little flying quad and I've crashed the crap out of it and it is still in one piece. Uh, so I've made a few little revisions to this frame. It, it is, if you can see it is kind of flexible. I think that does kind of add to the uh, longevity of it. And uh, it's, it, I don't know, it's just a fun little, little project to try to design and print my own quadcopter frame. But this time, I'm going to take it a little bit further, and I'm going to make this thing 2S. So here's what we need. Here's my frame. Uh, I call it the cavity frame. Uh, it, it's kind of kind of a play on kebab uh, toothpick frame. And I mean no ill ill will or ill intent uh, by coming up with this. I, I think it's I think it's just a fun little project. I'll put the STL out there for anybody if they want to give it a shot, or at least see if they like this before they cough over money for uh, for Kebab's carbon frame, which looks like a stellar, stellar design. But anyways, uh, enough of that. Uh, I re really appreciate everything he does for the community and a lot of the really interesting ideas he has. Anyways, here's the frame. Uh, that's my, my own custom frame. I'm going to be using the uh, Crazy B F4 Pro flight controller. This, this will take 2S, and it has a receiver, an FR Sky receiver already built into it on the uh, SPI bus, and uh, also based off of Kebab's videos, I'm gonna be using the AMAX 1103 7500 KV motors. These are some pretty, pretty sweet looking motors. Very smooth feeling. Um, you know, if you spin them, like you can't even feel, I mean, there's no notchiness whatsoever to these. Things are amazing. So we're gonna use those. And I've got a old all-in-one VTX camera off of, I think it was a Snapper 7, I do believe. We're gonna be using that camera VTX in a mount that I printed, again, out of that same nylon carbon fiber filament. I'll uh, put the link to the STL down in the description. Um, and we're also going to run the 65 millimeter King Kong props, uh, also LDARC now, and these are the kind of the magic sauce behind this whole this whole project. And uh, that that pretty much sums it up. So let's go ahead and get started putting this thing together. First thing, uh, I'm going to do uh, XT30 for 2S because these uh, this little guy here with two um, PH2. Point pH 2.0 connectors, this thing just does not cut it. So we're not even gonna entertain that idea. Uh, normally I wouldn't use a cap on this, but I happen to have this already kind of in my my, uh, my junk drawer of quad parts. So we're just gonna use this guy since it's already kind of made up. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, if you guys want the STL for this stupid vice, I'll put it in the description. I hate doing that, but I'll do it for you guys because inevitably someone is going to ask me. All right, first things first, we need to solder up our power and ground. So main discharge leads ground and power. Got my trusty Hacko 888D here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and tin these pads up a little bit. I'm running 850 degrees. That's in freedom units. And there must be a pretty big ground plane on this thing, because that ground pad does not take solder very well. It cools off really fast. Let's solder up our power lead.
There's power and And there's ground. Give a little wiggle, make sure uh, she's on there nice and tight. And there she is. Power and ground. Uh, by the way, this cabling here is, I believe, yep, 16, 16 gauge wire. The, uh, the wire I use has an abnormally thick jacketing on it, but, you know, it seems to work all right. Okay, so that is that. Now let's move on to the frame. So the idea of this frame is that it flies in this general direction with the, um, it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of a rib right here to add a little bit of rigidity flying in this direction. And you would just use like a, uh, like a broccoli uh, rubber band around the bottom here to, Hold your battery on. I think I got one around here. Somewhere. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it, you know what you get off a of, off a head of broccoli. So, go ahead, and we're gonna need to get some two mil screws, and these are two millimeter by sixteen. And put your little rubber bobbins on here. These come with the Crazy BF Four Pro, and these will kind of hold. The screws in place as long as you don't knock it around too much. Now the holes in the frame are a little on the big side just so there's a little room to play. Now we need to come back to the flight controller here uh, since I have just bare motor wires and I don't really feel like trying to crimp a JST connector on there. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to remove these guys and never try to remove them, but I feel like you should just be able to kind of pry up on them with like your fingernail out and like, there you go. Come right off. And all we got to do is desolder these pins and then we've got our solder pads. See, just like that. Now this isn't going to be the most straightforward quad bill because I'm not only putting this I'm putting this board on upside down so we're gonna have to play around in beta flight a little bit to correct the board orientation all right let me focus on getting these things out of here all right got those guys off of there let's go ahead and desolder all these pins all right. It's probably not super necessary to desolder these. You probably could just, um, you could probably just clip them. But they come out pretty darn easy as long as you don't end up screwing up any other components around them. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. And just make sure you touch up those solder pads on the top there. Make sure you don't have anything bridging. The reason why we pulled the plastic parts off instead of just going right for the pins is it's very, very difficult to heat up all three pins and pull them out as an assembly. That's, at least that's my, my rationale behind it. Um, obviously, your board, your choice, do what you want. I don't care. This is how I'm doing it. hundred different ways to skin this cat. There we go. Jeez. That <laughs> was way more difficult than it should have been. All right, so there we go. We got our D pinned board. Perfect. 
All right, so now we'll go ahead and install this guy in the proper orientation. So it's going to look something like that. And just temporarily, I'm going to put some nuts on this just to kind of hold it in place while we work on it. This is just out of a, uh, it's just out of like an Amazon special nylon standoff kit. We're not going to use these, but we're just going to make the assembly process a little bit easier. Right. Okay, time to put on the motors. Um, it's nice they come with these big chunks of tape on them. Uh, they do come with screws, which I believe hoping are the right size. Pretty sure they can be a little on the long side. Okay, so we got all our motors installed. Pretty simple process. Yeah, I didn't film it because it's literally just putting screws in. And I, uh, I'm kind of non-committal about cutting my wires. So I just went ahead and twisted them together. I'm just gonna run them underneath the board and then pop the excess out. And we're going to just solder it to the top of the board like so. So first thing we need to do Get our soldering iron out. Actually, I'm going to change my tip out for a smaller tip. All right, so I'm going to use my, my little TS-80 here with a nice pencil tip on it. Um, just because I really don't feel like changing the tip out of my Heiko. It's not very easy. And we'll just go around and solder up all the pads. Just got to solder up, solder up our motor wires. Now, if you are not very good at soldering or an extreme novice, this may not be the ideal job for you. Either hire it out, as in find a buddy that is good at soldering, or maybe uh, try to fashion yourself up some sort of connector and use the stock connections that we pulled off in the previous step. All right, so that is installed there and I'm just going to take my tweezers and I'm just going to push this excess wire up under the board. There's plenty of space. Shouldn't have a problem running that. There you go. That's one, one motor down and I'll solder up the other three. All right, there we go. We got them all soldered up. Um, <clears throat> Real good idea to take a real good look at your solder job, make sure nothing's bridging. Um, if you don't own an eye loop, I extremely, extremely recommend you get one, especially small soldering, little itty bitty wires like this. It allows you to get in there to get a nice, nice close up picture of what's going on. There you go. All 
All right, I think the yellow is out from the camera, so in to the flight controller, and green is into the VTX, so out of the flight controller. So I'm gonna do green to the out. So that's to the VTX. Yeller is in, so from the camera. And I really wish I had smart audio on this thing, because that would be pretty sweet. But I am just using some things that I have laying around. That should be all the soldering we need to do. All right. All right, now that I got that behemoth of a helping hand out of the way, we'll go ahead and finish putting this guy together. And take our standouts off. These were just temporary, remember? And we'll just kind of twist up some of this extra wire here. And we'll probably need to thread this into this mount a little bit. And now I'm seeing this, we probably get away with much shorter screws here. Yep, I'm going to change these screws out. Those are too stinking long. So that was a 16 mil. We might be able to get away with a 10. Oop. Ten is definitely too short. How about a twelve? Perfect. All right, twelve mil. Twelve millimeter. I'm sure I don't need these. I might actually end up taking them off later, but just for the time being, we'll put these on. Again, this is still. This is always a work in progress. I re recently picked up a CNC router, so carbon frames may be in my future. We'll see though. It's a beautiful thing about 3D printing is it's a much quicker, cheaper way to prototype stuff before you actually have to commit to the real deal. No, we'll go with the 12. Just keep it the same. Just keep it the same. There we go. That is the basic assembly. Now, the real star of the show, besides the rest of it, are these King Kong props. And unfortunately, they don't fit these motors the shaft diameter is way too small, so we need to get one of these little drill bits here. I'll put a link to it, uh, to this in the description. This is a 1.4 millimeter uh, milling bit. Pretty affordable. We'll just open the hole up a little bit on these. Unfortunately, this does typically induce a little bit of vibration because I'm not going to get these perfectly straight. All right, so we got those opened up and we'll just kind of press them into place. Remember, we're running uh, reverse props here. And just press down straight. There we go. Definitely want to get this right the first time because it, these are not uh, the easiest thing in the world to install and remove. You want to make sure you're backing up the motor like with something underneath it while you're pushing down on it. Make sure you're pushing as straight as possible. Yeah, 
Those are just barely on there. Should be good enough, though. Really would like to get these pushed on a lot farther. But that's what we got to work with. Maybe a little tappy tap tap. Maybe a little tappy tap tap with something that's actually straight on. There we go. That's a that's a way to do it. Not sure if it's a good idea, but it's an idea. Boy, I hope I got those on straight. <laughs> and that's it. That is our cavity frame. I might try to fish this little RX antenna out if I can. Probably should have done that before I start putting it together. All right, there we go. RX antenna. And there it is. There is my cavity, inspired by Mr. Rugi there. And uh, in this case, inspired does not mean copy to mass produce. This just is my own idea on probably inferior components and in, uh, on the frame. But hey, you know what? Here it is. And I believe me, I'm going to buy one of his frames when it comes out. Now, as far as power in this guy, uh, I've got a couple of these 450 milliamp packs and a few others. Maybe some of these Beta FPV 450s, GMB 300s, and some GMB 450s. Uh, unfortunately, these are this one here is a standard volt battery, not a not a HV. Um, I believe this is an HV either. This is standard. Uh, these are HV, but uh, you know we'll see. Uh, obviously, this one's going to be lighter than the rest. So, with that said, let's go ahead and figure out how much this guy is going to weigh. It's definitely weighs more than the last one I made. With this, that, and a lipo, we're looking at 61 grams, all up weight. 60, it's getting lighter. Look at that, it's losing weight. Let's re zero this guy. Battery, rubber band, quad. 61 grams, all up weight. With the Beta FPV pack, 70, and the GMB, 68, and dry weight of 40 grams. Before we get too crazy with setting this thing up, we've got our motors wired up, and I'm just going to go over to Betaflight and uh, do some configuration. So, plug it into Betaflight. And first thing we're going to see is the fact that the quad is not responding. I have it sitting level, pointing away from me, and as you can see, since we have that flight controller mounted upside down, it's not reacting properly. So we need to come over to configuration, and we need to change this over here. So gyro alignment, we want to do a 90 degree flip. Accelerator alignment, again, another 90 degree flip. And mag alignment, uh, we'll just do zero degree flip. And save and reboot. And calibrate accelerometer. And now the little picture of the quad is moving according to how I'm moving the quad. All right, that's step one. Next one is the motor. Since we've soldered these up to presumably the wrong motor pads, we're going to need to do some motor reassignment. Okay, so come down to your motor tab, plug in a lipo, click yes I understand, we don't have props on, and we're going to spin up each motor according to Betaflight and see what motor spins. So motor one spins 
motor three on the model. So motor one is three. Motor two is moving motor four. Four. Motor three is actually moving motor one. And motor four is moving two. All right. So two. Okay, we've got that. Go ahead and disconnect your LiPo. Go down to the CLI and type resource. And this will give us a list of our motor assignments. We'll take that, we'll copy it, and we'll dump it into our text document here. What this is, is each pin on the flight controller processor equals a motor output. So pin B10, 6, 7, 8 corresponding motors. I'm going to paste that again and I'm going to change these all to none. Copy these and we're going to paste them into our CLI and press enter. So this will clear the resources for each one of the motors. Now for this we need to change which motor is spinning on which uh, which output on the flight controller. So, for motor one resource being B10, B10 is actually spinning motor three. So we're going to change this one to a three, and so on and so forth. So we're going to change two to a four, the three to a one, and the four to a two. Copy that and paste it into our CLI. Press Enter. Type resource just to make sure it actually captured motor one, two, three, and four. And the big thing you got to do here is type S A V E. You got to type save and press enter. And this will actually write the configuration to the flight controller. If you screw up, you could dip out of this thing before making anything permanent just by clicking out of the CLI before you type save. So now we're going to go back down to our motors tab and plug in. And make sure that our motors are moving the right motors. So we're going to spool up motor one, and motor one does indeed turn. Now it's also a good idea to make sure it's spinning the correct direction. So we'll have to correct that as well. Okay, so motor one is reversed. So I need to reverse motor one, spin up motor two. Motor two is spinning, and it is also spinning the wrong direction. So we're going to need to reverse motor two. Spin up motor three. Motor three is spinning the correct direction. Now spin up motor four. Motor four is reversed as well. So motor four. So these are the motors we need to reverse in BL Heli. So we'll go ahead and turn that off and disconnect Beta Flight. And we're going to close Beta Flight and open up BL Heli Suite. Since this is a non-32 version of uh, BL Heli, we can use the the Chrome extension BL Heli Configurator. Connect. Yes, I don't have props on. We'll read setup. And just simply, we can go in here, hit reverse, reverse, and reverse, and right setup. And that's that. And while we're here, we can also check for new firmware. So we're on version 16.7. 16.7 is the newest one, so we're good to go there. We'll disconnect and reopen beta flight. Connect to beta flight. Back down the motors tab. And we'll go ahead and 
get our motor spinning and just verify that they're spinning uh, the way I'm doing this is props in. And they're all spinning in the right direction. So let's disconnect our lipo. That is that as far as getting the flight controller, the board orientation, and the motors all straightened out since we are doing some weird things with this flight controller, putting in an orientation which it wasn't ever designed to be in. A few other things we can do while we're in here. So ports. Uh, ports, we're just going to leave this alone. I don't have a uh, smart audio BTX, so I'm just going to disable that. If you had one, I would just leave that enabled. This is just old school push button dealy. Configuration. Verify our ports stayed. Okay, we're going to come down the configuration. And we're going to do make sure we're on D shot 600. Um, I do not like motor stop being enabled. 8K, 8K. Accelerometer on. Barometer, magnetometer, I don't really care about. Trash can. Um, we'll change this to. Whatever you want. Arming. Arming 180. Because I want to be able to actually arm this if it's not perfectly flat on the ground. Here's another one. FR, FR Sky X mode. We want to change this to D. I've had a lot of issues with all these crazy B flight controllers with the SPI protocol on FR Sky X. Lots of lockups, very short range, just really weird, twitchy stuff. That's a D16 mode. We'll change it to FR Sky D. It'll be a D8 mode. Acts perfectly fine. Way better. Uh, I have a video documenting this way back with the old uh, UR65 and the Snapper 7. I'll put a card up in the top right over here. You can go check that out if you want. Uh, let's see. Telemetry. LED strip. We don't have an LED strip. OSD. So I want air mode. OSD, anti-gravity, and dynamic filtering enabled. I don't have a lost model alarm, so I'll set those, even though that'll be really hard on these motors if it does go off. We'll hit save and reboot, and see if it crashes. Oh, it didn't crash. I always double check that it saved my settings, because why not, All right. Okay, now we're going to come down to OSD. We'll set this up how you like it. All right, now the next thing we need to do is find our radio. Uh, I have a trash can, so I already have a D8 model set up. You can, you can use multiple quads on the same model. Uh, nothing's going to be different. I'm going to use the same stick and switch configuration uh, from my trash can to uh, this thing, the cavity. Um, if you want to know how to set this up, uh, check out some of my other videos. I'll put links up here here and how I set up these quads. Uh, so the nice thing about the SPI is I don't need to fish around for any uh, bind button. We can just go down to the CLI and type B-I-N-D, bind. Boom. That puts the receiver in bind mode. I can hit bind on my, my radio. And the lights are flashing on my quad indicating that it has bound. I can click out of that, and I'm not really sure if I have to hit save, but we'll do it anyways. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. And as you can hear, it did bind. We'll go down to receiver, and there we go. We got, lost. we got all my wiggle sticks here. And you're going to want to go through and center up all your channels, just like you would do on any other quad. Make sure all my switches are working. We're going to go down to modes and we'll go ahead and assign our modes. So, arm on uh, aux one is already pre set up. Angle 
mode. I do not like angle mode, so we're going to get rid of that. I would much prefer... Sorry, I do like angle mode. I don't like horizon. So all the way down for me is acro. Up is angle. And we'll just leave it as that. And as far as the beeper goes, I'm going to have that on aux 3. Beeper and flip over after crash all the way up on aux 3. Pretty simple setup. Let's save. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. And that's that. We'll go ahead and disconnect and we'll go back to the bench and finish putting this guy together. All right, well, there it is. There is my cavity frame. Uh, 3D printed, built in house. Uh, yeah, the, the canopy has changed since uh, my last recording. I whacked a piece of. of uh, playground equipment and kind of broke one of the legs off of it. Uh, I, I don't think the nylon's a good use for this. This is just a, a, a standard TPU. Uh, this, I think, is going to be much better for something sticking out that far. Uh, but anyways, uh, if you like what I'm doing here, like, subscribe. Um, you know, if you, if you have any questions about this, please put it put it down in the, uh, the comment section below. I'm really curious what, what you guys think of uh, an idea like this, this 3D printed frame. Uh, yeah, I know uh, Bob Ruge came up with this idea first. That's cool. Um, I mean, he is uh, he is just miles ahead of me as far as um, ideas and and the things that he's doing. Uh, I, I I I like making my own stuff. That's why I made my own frame. If I could make my own electronics and motors, I probably would do it too. But yeah, that's just that's just not going to happen. Anyways, like, subscribe, and comment below. Let me know. Uh, let me know if you want to build one of these things, and if you want one of these frames, and you don't have the ability to make one, or anybody around you that can make one, uh, drop me a drop me a message in the uh, in the drop me a message down below. Or if you go on your browser, I don't think you can do this on the phone, and go to about. You can find my email address. Go ahead and hit me up, and uh, maybe we can work something out. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.